Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're glad to have you along with us. We're also happy to be joined this afternoon by the Medical Officer of Health at the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. Glad to be joined by the media who are in attendance this afternoon and just a quick reminder that if you do have questions, click on the question mark in the text bubble here on Microsoft Teams if you could indicate your name and your media outlet as well. And finally, a welcome to those who are Tuning in this afternoon on Rogers Television and the Rogers Facebook page or YouTube channel. Listeners on Global News Radio, 980 CFPL, and those who are watching on the CTV London website. Well, let's begin with the opening remarks this afternoon with Dr. Chris Mackey. Thanks very much, Dan. So things are pretty calm on the COVID front. Uh, 16 cases to report today, no deaths. Our seven day moving average though is, is really quite down this week. We have seen a fairly consistent decline over the past two months since kind of mid August. Really most of that is the vaccine campaign uh, kicking in, into play, but uh, we know that the mask mandates that remain in place are a big part of that as well. Same trends at the province, uh, you're seeing less cases, you're seeing a declining uh, time trend and uh, you're seeing you know very few deaths continuing to be reported. Uh, we we have heard you know no more than you have in the media about about some uh, restrictions being lifted potentially as early as next week by the provincial government around things like capacity limits in restaurants. Uh, we don't have further de details and uh, we know that you know, there will likely be expanded third dose offerings for high risk groups. Again, don't have details on timing or the groups at this point that we can share. Uh, and of course, we're really looking forward to vaccinating children and, and uh, getting our mass immunization clinics up to capacity again to offer that. Um, but we don't have firm timing there yet either. So uh, I'm happy to take any questions if there are any, Dan. Uh, so there's not much more to report this week. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. And uh, it seems that it's maybe one of those weeks. Uh, there are no questions in the queue this afternoon from the media. So um, much like your update, there's uh, we're carrying on and doing what is necessary and uh, not a lot of big issues coming up this afternoon. So with that, we are going to bring a close to this afternoon's virtual media briefing. We will be back with our next virtual media briefing on Monday afternoon at 2 p.m. We hope you'll be able to join us then. So between now and next Monday afternoon, have a great rest of the day. And just as I was signing off, Dr. Mackey, we got a question that came right in. Jane Sims. Jane, thank you for your question. We'll go to Dr. Mackey. Dr. Mackey, given the vaccine rates here in Middlesex, London, how concerned are you about the provincial loosening of restrictions. Yeah, thanks for the question, Jane. There have been a number of restrictions loosened over the past few weeks. I think we're a bit early to know exactly what impact that will have. And so it's hard to say for sure what impact further loosening of restrictions will have. You know, we have great vaccination rates. I would be much more comfortable if, you know, we had vaccine available to children. Uh, but I understand that uh, you know the the government is is moving forward in this way, and I feel like uh, you know we we will be able to handle it. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. And uh, another question just came in from Andrew Graham at Global News Radio 980 CFPL. Dr. Mackey, based on recent observations, would you support the lifting of further restrictions that's being reported on so far? And I think what Andrew is referring there is the uh, Global News story and others about the province's possible decision next week. Yeah, thanks for the question, Andrew. I guess, you know, in an ideal world from a public health perspective, we would have a bit more time to see the effect of the restrictions that have been lifted so far. But, uh, you know, I, I understand the desire to get back to normal and why the government is choosing, choosing to do this. And, you know, it's hard to argue uh, with that decision, given the trends that we're seeing in terms of ca case counts with COVID and of course deaths being very low as well. Dr. Mackey, another question, uh, another couple of questions have just come in. We'll go to Merrick Sutherland next at CTV News. 
Dr. Mackey, what does the data show in terms of potential spread in restaurants and gyms? And I would expect fitness clubs as well. Yeah, appreciate the, the question, Mark. We've definitely seen, you know, we've seen a number of outbreaks here in Middlesex and London associated with restaurants, uh, less with gyms, but we've certainly seen cases. And, and then across Ontario, we've seen lots and lots of outbreaks. Uh, the, the typical outbreak in a restaurant has to do with staff who are, you know, letting their guard down on break. Uh, but we have seen staff to uh, customer transmission as well. At sports events, gyms in particular, uh, are definitely a high risk of super spreader events. Now, uh, we haven't seen that in the context of facilities where a vaccine mandate is in place. You did see in late August a significant outbreak at a hockey tournament in Peel region. Uh, you saw last, uh, I believe it was late 2020, you saw a very large outbreak associated with spin classes at a uh, at a gym in Hamilton that ended up numbering over 100 when you looked at the secondary cases as well. People taking the illness home or to other workplaces and spreading it there. But uh, again, these are not in the context of vaccine mandates. So we, we, we have yet to, um, we have yet to see significant spread of COVID in a place where there is a vaccine mandate in place. Let's go to our next question. It comes from Sophia Rodriguez at CBC London. Dr. Mackey, how do you feel about Canadians soon being able to easily travel to the United States? How cautious should people looking to cross the border be? You know, the, the US decision to lift travel restrictions is one thing. You still have a recommendation from the Canadian government not to travel outside of Canada. And that is definitely a recommendation that we support here at the Middlesex London Health Unit. I'd also note that there are places within Canada, uh, such as Alberta and Saskatchewan, where the rates of spread of COVID are comparable to what you're seeing uh, in the US and some very hard hit places. So of course, uh, we would advise caution traveling to those places as well. Thank you very much. And let's go to the next question. Ben Harrietha from XFM News at Fanshawe College is joining us. Uh, Dr. Mackey, has there been any trend in cases uh, related to Thanksgiving weekend, even small ones? Yeah, thanks for the question, Ben. It would be too soon to see uh, any cases related to Thanksgiving. It usually takes about five days for symptoms to develop, and then you've got time to get tested that's required, and then time to get the results of the test back. So we would usually see that sort of impact happening, uh, you know, between one week and two weeks after the event. That said, you know, we had for the most part great weather. Uh, I, I certainly know of many people who did take the recommendation up to have their Thanksgiving gatherings outdoors, and I and I hope many people did and continue to do that. Uh, and if that is the case, then we really don't anticipate a large impact from Thanksgiving. And uh, Dr. Mackey, that does bring us to the end of the questions in queue. And um, I felt a bit like an auctioneer before, so uh, I think folks have had an opportunity now. Thank you once again for joining us. We'll be back next Monday at 2 p.m., so we'll see you then. Have a great rest of your Thursday afternoon, and so long for now.